everybody, uh, Dom and I are back again to do another pack review. Um, and this definitely isn't the second time we've had to record this because of issues. <laughs> so I don't know why you'd ask that. But we're here to do, look at the uh, first pack of the Flight of Crow cycle today, mm -hmm. the Archmaster's Key. Um, it's been a while, but we're back again, and the new cycle started, so we should be uh, on it every month now. And as yeah, yeah, and hopefully we'll do the roses. Is it the, the House, House of, of Thorns? Thorns House, of, House of Thorns Deluxe as well at some point too. Okay, so the first card out of the set is the Archmaster's Key. Um, the key is in a weird spot, but it's the title card, so it's towards the front. Usually those all the neutral cards are towards the back, so uh, mm -hmm. that's kind of a cool thing that they did for this pack. It's a one-cost attachment. It, uh, it's an item citadel trait, and it can only be on maesters. And it says, in an action, you can kneel and attach character to choose an event in an opponent's discard pile. Once this phase, you may play that event as if it were in your hand. If you do, you place it on the bottom of the owner's deck instead of the discard pile. So I, we had mixed reviews about this because I kind of thought it could be useful in some scenarios and Dom was like, meh. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I feel like it's a middle-of-the-road card. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you'd have one, you'd have to have the Macers out. and There are a lot more Macers just in this pack alone, though. Yeah, and I think, and I get why, why they're doing it. They're trying to push, you know, the new um, Macer agenda yeah. and trying to get that thing going and stuff like that. Um, I just haven't had a lot of chances to work with it to see, mm -hmm. but um, I do. I definitely see potential there, you know. So yeah, and I I, I like it because you can play your opponent's good events if you have. The, so it's mostly I think going to be for like neutral stuff because a lot of specific, at least for like Lannister and the things I'm thinking of are very specific to a character of your faction or something like Not that. Not necessarily. Right? Um, if you think about Martell, who have crazy events. Viper Eyes, Vengeance. Yeah, right. Well, Martell, yeah, that's one case where like, a lot um, of them aren't specific to, to well, Martell. Let's see. With Greyjoy, you have We Do Not Sow. Um, yep. Trying to think of some of the others. Um, I'm thinking, like, I want to, again, like I was like... Or even Stark, Winter's Coming, Race yeah, to Claim. That's true. That'd be cool, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, you could... I wanna, Lady you could Santa's get, Rose. With some of these cards, you could get uh, three, four, four claim on, mm -hmm. in one turn with Stark. So, yeah. Uh, it so, could be cool. So the more we talk about it, it's like the more I the like The same it. thing that always happens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so we'll move on to the next card. Uh, the next card is the first Stark card of the pack. It's called Dreadfort Maester, and this is what, one of the things we're just talking about. Mm -hmm. So as a four-cost character with an Intrigue and a power icon, so Intrigue and Stark's always usually good. Uh, three costs, so I don't know. Just alone on those four things or three things, that's pretty good. It's not crazy. Yeah, I mean, four costs and you know with the Intrigue and power three strength that's good mm -hmm. i'm not too fond of the reaction to to raising the claim because like i said you know you got a one cost event winner's coming that does mm -hmm. the exact same thing and you're not spending four gold the, the thing i like about it is yeah you, i don't think i would play this for its effect i would play it for a body and then have its effect available at the threat and all the time right like where you're like mm -hmm. if you're not careful mm -hmm. i could just discard this dude and like you could have your whole field life because Mm -hmm. You're already in military or intrigue, so you can take out their entire hand if you have the right plot out, or you can yeah. take out their entire like board without yeah. you know hurting yours. Too bad. Yeah. The the also then the main thing is you got to be able to keep them on the board. Mm -hmm. So if you have an opponent that's playing an aggressive deck, mm -hmm. he can end up just and dying. he doesn't get hit by here to serve. So because I think it's three or lower for here to serve, right? Yes. Okay. So he will not get hit with here to serve, which means that if you if you mm -hmm. pull him. He's not coming out, so that's one no. thing to keep in mind too. Uh, not terrible, but um, if you build, if if you could build the right deck around that whole raising your plot thing, you could do some crazy combo turns. I bet. But I would give it like a three out of five. Okay. To be honest, are we doing ratings now? Sure. Why not? <laughs> what is Archmaster's key? Um. Well, more that we talked about it, I would say it's probably a three and a half. Yeah. For me, I, I definitely think it has to be in the right deck though, which. Pulls it on down yes. on my rating a little bit because it's not something you'd like put ubiquitously in anything like the no. Iron Bank has its due type of stuff. I wouldn't put it in every deck um, unless you're just trying to you know push that um, Macer agenda or you know you're playing that one plot where you put a Macer into play, mm -hmm. so it's like you know you're gonna have that card available to put it on that character. So yeah, and uh, 
our ubiquitous weird rating system is going to be <laughs> awesome, so keep that in mind. Uh, the third card we have in the pack is a second star card. It's a three cost event. Mm -hmm. And three cost you see in an event is like kind of expensive, but but it's a challenge action. You can choose and stand any number of direwolf characters and uh, characters of direwolf attachments. So that could be cool. Yeah, um, I've been noticing they've been kind of kind of building on the direwolf kind mm -hmm. of theme, um, which you know it's. It's almost there, I feel like. It's not fully developed, but that definitely helps. If three cost event in Starkville, like, that's going to be hard to play. But it is loyal. It is loyal, So yeah. if you're doing fealty, it's two. If you potentially are running tourney grounds, you yeah, can lower it. Uh, or if you're playing the pot Little Fingers Meddling, it's actually just one. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's potential for it, um, but you got to be running the Dire Wolf card, so I wouldn't necessarily put it in. Are we out of focus? We're out of focus <laughs> again, but we're going to keep going. Just keep going. Pardon our out of focus faces. <laughs> uh, the third card in is uh, Septa Nicene. Oh, there we go. Cool. It's, uh, it's a three cost character. It's our first Tyrell card, mm -hmm. and it's loyal. It's a, got a power icon and one power. Mm -hmm. It's a seven character, which is kind of cool because that mm -hmm. plays into that like neutral seven theme, and there's a yeah. few cards that care about that a lot. Yep. And it's as an action, you can kneel her to choose an attacking character with four strength or lower and stand that character and remove it from the challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it plays into that whole removing characters thing. And uh, you were talking about knights, which is kind of cool. I like that idea with like yeah. Garden and this card. You can really control mm -hmm. like knight, knight combat. And then also they have that, um, this is going with the House of Thorn box. Um, they have that Macer. I think it's, um, you can remove and stand a character with the lowest strength. In that challenge. That's so, kind of cool. Um, so you could do it like twice? Oh, yeah. no, she doesn't even... Oh, yeah, she has to kneel. Okay. Yeah, so you can, you know, potentially, you know, use her for one challenge and then another character for another challenge. Mm -hmm. And so um, just that threat of, you know, being able to take characters out. And the nice thing in this game is unless you're playing against a certain deck, the zero power at some point, if it was reduced, doesn't matter at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's other games where like having zero means you're done, but yeah, this character's not gonna. It's gonna block if it doesn't remove someone from combat. Yeah, right? I mean it's not one of those uh, cards that are gonna win challenges. However, you know it could be a good card like you're saying with the seven, if you have the high sept in, you yeah, know, you can kind of redirect stuff, like redirect that, yeah. stuff um, which is kind of cool. So mm -hmm. if you can save your characters from Jakaris or what's the, oh sorry we weren't even on it. What's the rating? Um. I would give it uh, two. Uh, yeah, probably two and a half, okay. three. I think it just uh, costs a little too much for for being a one one strength one icon. Um, I guess it's a vent. His power is kind of. I hard. mean, I I don't think it's that it costs too much. I think it's more of you got to kind of necessarily. I wouldn't say you have to be solely uh, on that theme of removing characters, but it's definitely a threat to mm -hmm. your opponents you know because it yeah, makes yeah, them right. it makes them think like well i can nail this character for four strength but more likely you know they're going to remove the challenge to win the challenge and especially with the knight theme going on with attacking or defending alone mm -hmm. you know that that's something that can push that through to where you can win those challenges that's true that's true so i'm going to give it probably a 2.75 wow okay <laughs> then uh our next card is oath keeper uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, got Brienne of Tarth on the picture, and it's yeah, a Brienne sweet Tarth. looking blade. I, I wish they made it look like that in the show. It's really cool looking. Mm -hmm. uh, one cost attachment is non loyal. It's a Valerian steel weapon, which I don't. We've probably seen one or two other Valerian steel weapons. Like Ice might be a Valerian steel, but it's kind of cool that they yeah. put that trait on there. Yeah. Um, attached character gets plus two strength, and after you win a challenge by five or more strength in which attached character is participating, sacrifice Oathkeeper to search your deck for a non Tyrell character, mm -hmm. reveal it, and add it to your hand, and then shuffle your deck. So no no limits on the, what you can pull from that. That's mm -hmm. kind of fun. Yeah. And a one cost two strength bump is pretty good. It's not uh, ambush. Yeah. It doesn't ambush on on its own, but it's kind of cool. Well, and then also it doesn't limit. It doesn't say a Tyrell character only or mm -hmm. a knight character only. It's just attached character, which is really good because it gives you um, different options to do that. Um, and in fact, that might be a theme we see throughout the Flood of Crows cycle because there's mm -hmm. another card in this pack that has non faction of card it is yeah i think they're card. trying to work on the banner yeah. kind of things okay. um i actually really like it um anytime you can boost someone's strength that's always good um also it kind of goes back with the you know winning challenges uh, alone with the night thing 
Um, you it, can definitely yeah. power rush. And it helps you with five or more stuff, too. So you could put mm -hmm. in, like, put to the sword or uh, support of the people. That yes. kind of stuff where, like, you, if you're going to play this card to do its effect, you might as well throw some of the other stuff in there, too, because you might be able to trigger a one or two other events off of just this card. When, when this card would trigger, you mm -hmm. could also play the other events as well. Yeah. If you're winning by five or more. Yeah, and you can do, like, Relentless Assault mm -hmm. and um, Elena's... Uh, I forgot how it pronounced Cunning? it. No. No, it's the one where you can do additional power challenge. Oh, okay, okay. Um, you know, so there's different options you can do. And with the new Knight of Flowers, you know, you're playing those events anyway. Mm -hmm. he, gets, he gets plus two strength for every event. So there could be something cool there. I, I Again, I like I like non-faction because it, it means you can you can mm -hmm. use it to tutor and you're a banner. And that's, yeah. so that means you can put it in any deck and it's effectively a two strength bump per one. Mm -hmm. And you can tutor a, non a banner card. Yep. Uh, okay, the next one. I give it four out of five. Yeah, I think I, I'm at four. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm going to forget what we do ratings every time. Four out of five for that one, too. I think it's pretty solid. I, I just like any time you can put two strength on a character yeah. for one gold is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, young Builder is the next one. So more builders. <laughs> Are you happy? Is everyone happy about that? Is that still a thing? I guess I haven't figured it out. Uh, uh, two, it's a two-cost character with a power icon and two strength. So but a monocon, but he's got power to equal to his cost, which is mm -hmm. good. He's got Bestow, so you can put more money on him if you want to. And he can't have weapon in the attachment step weapon, which is a common. Yep. Uh, after a Night's Watch location or attachment enters play under your control, discard uh, one gold from Young Builder to draw one card. So, And he's loyal. Yeah, not bad. I kind of like it. Good. I mean, you can you know maybe put one or two gold mm -hmm. um, on it and potentially get an extra draw. When I, I don't know if, if people still play the Builder's deck, I think at some point you have enough money to play this for like five and just mm -hmm. be able to extra draw, and you can hit those those Isle of Ravens cards yeah. harder, and you can keep getting them back in your hand by just kind of playing a do or playing a card mm -hmm. and then drawing a card to replace it. Yeah, I, the only thing is, like, for me, if I had, a, you know, playing a deck and if I had to choose claim for military, I hate to say it, but that dude's gone. Um, oh, yeah, if he doesn't have any gold on him. Oh, even if he had gold, that's why I wouldn't. Me personally, I wouldn't invest too much on him. No, oh, okay. I wouldn't I do the three. Saying. I'd probably do one, two at most, depending on how my board looks. Um, but yeah, I mean, anytime you can get card draw, that's yeah, it's always good. That actually makes me feel like maybe he's a win more, a little bit of a win more card because mm -hmm. you, if you don't bestow him, he's a two two power icon, which yes. is very. You can already do that in Night's Watch, mm -hmm. right? And if you do bestow him, you probably have some extra money. And yes. you might. Then I'm thinking about the deck that, like, when I was playing builders, it was just like if you had money, you were already stalemated. Uh, and you I remember really that builders to, deck. <laughs> you don't really need to play a guy who might draws you cards because mm -hmm. you just kind of well, are already the, in a stalemate situation. Where yeah, you, you have really Messenger and Raver, yeah. or Raven. Yeah, uh, that card Raver. is crazy. <laughs> and I do remember your builder deck. It was frustrating. that, and I was just playing very common, like standard builders was, at the time. So it was very frustrating <laughs> <laughs> as he beat it. Um, the next card is the Rat Cook. I actually really like this card a lot. Um, marshalling Action. It's a two-cost event. It's, uh, it's, it looks like it's Song, I think. Yeah, it's a Song event. Okay, Song event. Oh, Derp. It says it right there. Uh, <laughs> marshalling Action. Choose a character with printed cost X or lower, where X is the number of steward characters you control. Until the end of the round, take control of that character uh, and treat its printed text box as if it were blank, except for traits. So, I, I, I don't want to stop you right now, but we didn't do the rating on the previous Oh, rating one. on the... I think it's two. Two out yeah, of five. I give it two. For, for Young Builder, two out of five. Just so the listeners know. Let's move on to the better card of the Night's nice Watch ones, because I really like the Rat Cook a yes. lot. I'm just thinking of all the things that like, you could do here. Like, <laughs> if you have enough steward characters, you could, like, take control and military reclaim one of their, like... Yeah. One of their... Yeah, take, like, one of like their weenies. Cards. Yeah, or, or not even, like, like, if you don't have enough stewards, yeah, weenies are good, and you could, mm -hmm. you know, do what you need to do there for military claim, but you could also... Like use this to kind of just like do a real big sweep of like of mm -hmm. units if you do the right kind of challenging and yeah that could be really fun. I just I mean I like it because one you're you're taking your opponent's character, but I remember making a Night's Watch deck build around taking your opponent's characters and using them against them, mm -hmm. and it was just, it was a lot of fun. And there's um, stewards in that deck already because they're the yeah. ones that like the the guy who the Night's Watch recruiter or whatever is a steward I think yeah. I mean, and then you can just throw in your, you know, your normal, um, I forgot the guy's name, but it's like during entry challenge, every steward gets insight. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and stuff like that. So, I mean, there's potential for it. I like it. 
you know. Yeah, and the, the whole printed text boxes, if it were blank thing, could be really cool in the right situations. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I think that could be really fun if you like if your opponent has something that's turned off because of what you've done, you can turn it on for you. Or yeah, I can't think of a good scenario where that would happen, but I really like the rat cook a lot. Just being able to take someone else's you know weenie, you know from them, mm-hmm. to potentially make their claim, you know a little bit worse. Mm-hmm. You know having to kill a bigger guy, or vice versa, you just kill their guy to save your characters. So. Yeah, or you use it to like use crossing to initiate a third challenge you couldn't have. Yeah, things like that. Uh, yeah. Rat cook for me is a four out of five. I would give it like a four out of five. Yeah. Cool. Cool. We agree. I, yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, <laughs> again, pardon our blurriness, but uh, yeah. So, it's okay. Yeah. We're just we're not we're, we're recording through the pain. Yeah. Uh, They're just gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> the next one is the Queen's Men. It's the first uh, Baratheon card. Mm-hmm. Um, it. It's a three cost character with a military intrigue icon. I like those two icons a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, as a two two power, it's an ally relore. So ally means it can be targeted with a bunch of hate. Yeah, but dissension. It's a it's a non loyal. Yes. Um, its reaction says after you marshal queen's men, choose an opponent and look at his or her hand. So for three <laughs> for three money, you can look at your opponent's hand. Mm-hmm. Cool. That's good. <laughs> and it's, you can able to trigger uh, seen in flames. So mm-hmm. you know you're getting multiple chances to look at your opponent's hand. So. Yeah, that's true. So and you can do you it can twice. Kneel. Yeah. You and can kneel. then, then you can kneel a non-Baratheon character to choose and discard one non-character from their hand. So the, that's cool. And I had a, you know, I, I was talking to a friend of mine, and we were talking about that non-Baratheon thing, and he was telling me you would have to kneel one of your own. Yeah, you always have to kneel your own because it's because cost. of the cost. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know. I just was like almost a little excited i was like oh man that'd be kind of <laughs> cool you kneel their character plus discard a card out of their hand but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but still it's still a good effect i like it the uh i i think it's great i mean you're always gonna have you're always gonna i, mean, I don't know i don't think that baratheon fealty is something i've ever seen mm-hmm. so you're always gonna have bannered and with the um the cool stuff i've seen with baratheon bannering is like always makes me really excited because mm-hmm. They're always doing something really fun with the Greyjoy, or you can Baratheon Banner Lannister to do whatever that does. I mean, yeah. you can always go Stark too, which is nice. And yeah, so uh, yeah, I don't know. Just kneel a chump and let it go. <laughs> yeah, I it's, mean it's nice, and then also you get to see their hand, so yeah, which is great good. because then you know exactly what they have, and you can you know maybe better plan against their their. Cards. Yeah, I, I think the in this game you so when you're coming from another game into Game of Thrones, one of the things that you'll um, well, first off, you made the right choice. <laughs> that's fair <laughs> enough. Uh, you one thing you like things you start to figure out are like when you play plots, and that's kind of a yeah. cool thing to figure out. Um, how often drawing is really important. Like yes, it, it can kind of harkens back to like why magic players want to draw all the time is because it's like how you play and with a Mm -hmm. 60 card deck you really want to dig in there yeah and what another thing is visibility in your opponent's hand because there's like the challenge phase is all about events and manipulation of the board and being able to see what your opponent can do is uh, invaluable in this Mm -hmm. game so exactly so yeah i think it's i think and you're potentially discarding a card three and a half to four for me uh this card um and i would give it three and a half just because of the idea just because of the, you're seeing your opponent's hand just that alone and you got a character on the board that yeah you can you block know, intrigue yeah block intrigue mm-hmm. or you know maybe push a, a challenge this next card fits into like there's this um there was some deck and it, it was actually it fits into the no characters Baratheon martel deck that you can play <laughs> and it, I like it because it totally locks out a character. It's oh, funny to me. Oh my gosh. Uh, and, and it helps with dominance. So, um, oh. a one toss attachment, the traitor to the crown. It's mm-hmm. a loyal event. So, you ha- so, this works because Chamber of the Painted Table. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe it doesn't work because it's loyal because you have to be Martell. But you could probably still try to build something that way. Uh, opponent's character only. Uh, mm-hmm. It just I, every time I look at this card, I think of like stinking drunk or whatever that card is too. Where yeah. like we have a few like Baratheon attachments that just hate your opponent's character for some reason. Yeah, uh, attached character does not contribute its strength to power challenges or to its controller's total for dominance. So uh, it can still it can still fight really hard and it can <sighs> still intrigue, but not, not not contributing to dominance means that if they just let mm-hmm. it sit, it doesn't do anything. I yeah, um, I really like that card just because you know Baratheon they're good for pushing. Power challenges, mm-hmm. um, and also winning dominance. Um, they have a bunch of 
wicked events for dominance or reactions and I was just thinking about it too. You're right. And so one of the things that I was talking, I was thinking was, does this play into the Neil theme or not? And with um, with Robert, it kind of does because you uh, you can't what if they're not going to contribute any. You don't put this on a character who doesn't have a, another icon because you want them to kneel for something, right? Yes. Because you you're saying, hey, you can't now not participate in this half of the game. So mm -hmm. if you don't use this character, it's dead on the dead on the board. Yeah. And so you either say, hey, give me some more stuff for kneeling your characters, or this guy doesn't do anything this turn. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, and most b bigger characters, they're only going to have two icons. Mm -hmm. There's a couple that have all three, but, you know, you put that on there, you're taking, like you said, half their icons away. Mm -hmm. They're only able to do one challenge, especially if it's a character that has Renown or Intimidate. You're kind of limiting their their options. You can completely lock someone down with Martel, like mm -hmm. you do, like, uh, Detained or whatever one takes away military and a power, yeah. and you're in a good spot yeah mark yeah those attachments are insane <laughs> and and it's not terminal which is kind of cool yeah so, so. <laughs> if it goes away you just yeah. get to put it right back in your hand <laughs> uh, i would give it a five out of five just yeah i think so i think I, our first I five really out of five like goes to the, the, the traitor to the crown <laughs> yeah all right uh we have our next uh card it's a lannister card and it's our mace it's another maester mm -hmm. um non a non-named maester uh, just like dreadfort uh maester Mm -hmm. It's a three-cost character with Intrigue. It's Maester at the Rock. Mm -hmm. At the Rock! <laughs> uh, it's a two-power and a non-loyal. Uh, as a reaction, after you play an, a Lannister event, kneel Maester at the Rock to move that event from your discard pile to the top of your deck. What? No way! Mm -hmm. That, like, if if uh, Jumping Lions wasn't doing well, I mean, I can imagine this probably helps it out even more, where you can mm -hmm. do, like... What is it? Um, the Lannister always pays its debts, or whatever card like bounces yeah. the Lannister cards out. Man, or uh, never bet against my family. Or without his beard, you could like without his beard, almost yeah. Every turn or trial by combat, yeah. I'm scared uh, with, of this with card Cersei, now. That with we support Cersei, it. two claim, potentially able to change the intrigue into a military mm -hmm. claim. Yeah. yeah, and and that's and I was gonna say that first intrigue icon in Lannister means literally nothing. Mm -hmm. So like this guy blocks intrigue from your opponent maybe, but. If you can turn it into a military, he might just be the one that like pushes through the two, and they're like, uh, okay, cool, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And multiple entry challenges, mm -hmm. you can do that with uh, yeah. Lannister cards, too. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so, more Lannister event entry nonsense. <laughs> yeah. Man, I would hate that if I had six cards in my hand and well, think about seven this. cards, and they hit me with. <laughs> think about this. You, you had um, Castle Rock and Lannister pour out. This is like the dream scenario. Live in the dream. And you're able to do Cersei, the core one, you have, um, let's say you have without his beard, um, I take that back. Let's say you have trial by combat. You really like in that combat trial. I know, I do. Um, you play it, you kneel, you kneel him, mm -hmm. the macer, to put it back on top of your, your deck. You trigger, I think it's Lannisport, to draw, to draw it. it. <laughs> You're able to do another intrigue, mm -hmm. push for another intrigue, play it again. It's like a more functional, like Annals of, not the Annals of Castle Black, the, uh, no, it is Annals of Castle Black, because mm -hmm. you get to use them from your discard, but mm -hmm. hey, it's not a discard. You can actually put it in your discard and then mm -hmm. use Annals of Castle Black a different turn. Or yeah, you or you can just put it in your hand, keep it in your hand mm -hmm. for the next turn and just re them. This card's nice, I think, uh, well, it has the potential mm -hmm. to be cool because it plays it may play into that whole Cersei Wombo deck that was happening a while ago mm -hmm. where you just kind of stack power on Cersei and win the, the game. Yeah, the uh, cancer. Or, or the <laughs> yeah, and there's a, there's a there's a location too that you put power on when you win. So you're just like oh yeah, stacking, the small, yeah, small, yeah, small uh, chamber con uh, council. Yeah, so you just stack power on those two, and this can keep so this <laughs> keeps your events from being dead in the water, meaning you can play them without having Annals of Castle Black, or if you mess up that turn, you have another chance to do certain Cersei's stuff. Up. So. Yep. I'm I'm a fan. Uh, I think it's four out of four to five. Mm -hmm. Four out of ten. Seven Glarbogs out of ten Glarbogs. I would, well, I don't know if I get a four out of ten. I pro or four out of five. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I probably give it like a three and a half. I don't know. It's scary. Like it's really scary. If you can get it going, yes, it can well, be scary. Even it, having him on the field means that like you have to be careful because they can put treachery back on top. Exactly. And you're like, ah, crap! Now they have four treacheries in their deck. Uh, so I'm just or a, my playing... my ratings from pure fear. Yeah, or <laughs> I mean, it's totally nothing. It means nothing when you're playing against Greyjoy and all their pillage. Yeah, that's true too. But then so. you just don't activate it and you you don't play him. Like if if you don't, true. he's a dead maybe a dead card in your hand, I guess, or yeah. is it 
kind of expensive military claim. <laughs> All right, Thanks. next one we got is Ashamark. It's a three cost location. It's in the mm -hmm. Westerlands. It's a loyal location, and it says bestow three. Reaction after a phase begins, kneel and sacrifice Astromark to return each character with printer cost X or lower to its hand, and of course X is the number of gold on Astromark. So mm -hmm. it hits, it, for six, it hits all three costs or lower characters. Mm -hmm. That could be cool. Mm -hmm. That could be really brutal in a, the wrong turn. Uh, it's like a mid turn telegraphed um, first snow winter. Yeah. And it's a reaction, so any phase begins, so you could do it. Yeah, I don't know. If after maybe you like have a really bad turn and you're just like I'm resetting this is I'm done with this and you just flip yeah. the board up and you maybe have a good plot to go in after it. Mm -hmm. I, I it, yeah, putting that many cards back to your hand could really suck. Well, I mean it's the the cool thing is it's up to you when you want to trigger it. Mm -hmm. So um, depending on and it's after any phase, so you could do it like mm -hmm. after the plot phase begins, mm -hmm. which could be crazy if you you could use it to. If you if you in see an incoming Valar, you use it to pull all your Valar characters back in your hand for Valar. If like you're like so cool with everything else dying, yeah. Like builders would love this if they could cross faction because they could like pull all the builders back before a Valar mm -hmm. turn or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, I, I kind of like it. I mean, just the even even if you don't use it right away, just the your opponent knowing it's on the board that mm -hmm. it could happen, it might change their strategy of what they marshal and you know by putting out higher cost characters limits them on how many characters they can put out i just don't know when you play it like when because you, you got to play it for at least two so it's a five cost location yeah and with, but with lancer and all their that's true i guess gold i mean i don't see it being too big of a deal uh -huh. i mean it's one of those turns where like you you're probably not going to put out a lot of characters out you're just putting it out to to you know threaten your opponent that yeah hey, i got this this is my wild card the one thing i don't like about it is that it's at the phase begins not in so you can't save characters that are in play that are going to die or, or bounce or something like that mm -hmm. or die or get discarded so like mm -hmm. it kind of doesn't really play into the, like lannister theme that mm -hmm. much or the, one of the lannister themes that much but mm -hmm. um yeah it, I, I think it for me it's like a two out of a two out of five but that's just because i don't really like lannister that much <laughs> I'm gonna give it a uh, four. Whoa, drastic uh, opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah, just because of the fact that I played uh, my coworker yesterday, he had Lannister winner, and his whole agenda thing was putting characters back in your opponent's hand. Mm -hmm. And with that card and the Tower of the Hand and uh, the new Hound, and <clears throat> it was, it was yeah, just brutal. Stuff. It was just brutal. <laughs> Uh, so. All right, so the next card is our first Greyjoy card. It's mm -hmm. Alkalite of the Waves. Uh, we're talking about cool combos with this card that you never pulled off, uh, but want to. <laughs> Two class character no. with a power icon and one uh, a power icon and one strength. Mm -hmm. It's a Drowned God character, so that gets fun. Uh, there's a lot of Drowned card, Drowned God stuff. Yes. And when an Alkalite of the Waves is killed, you gain one power for your faction. So mm -hmm. if you can kill him and continuously bring him back, you can get a lot of power that way. And yes. Yeah, and so. <laughs> we were talking about the new Aaron Damphir, I think, that has, like, the... You, Not the you, new one, the core one. The core one, okay, yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> uh, the new one is the one that, like, stands someone... Or stands or someone when they get saved. Saved, yep. uh, The old one says, if you win dominance, put a character from a dead pile into play, the top an, character. An Ironborn character. Oh, so he's not Ironborn. No, what I was saying earlier was there's um, a Drown God character, it's four costs, I think it's three strength, intrigue uh, and power and it says after you win dominance kill him to put a three cost or lower non-unique Greyjoy character into play so waves yeah so that would work with him he's also an ironborn character which then Daphne oh, so you would run the cycle I get so it so you, you would cycle him back in potentially three card combos are the way to go if you want them to fire one every ten games but they're really fun when they work <laughs> yeah yeah it's not like the drown god theme is i mean it's getting there um i tried it however a lot of the drown gods just have power icons mm -hmm. so it was just kind of hard but there's also another way um you can get characters back in is through the old wick mm -hmm. location um so there's able if you're able to win by five or more strength you can put them back in your hand 
um, so then you can reuse them later. So there's different ways to bounce characters in and out. And if, this guy doesn't work if you save him. So you, if saving is an interrupt, so it will never give you power. If oh, you and save then they him. have the other. This is um, they have another character. This is Drown God. I can't, I can't remember the names. Um, I think it's Drown God Disciple or whatever. But it says after characters enters play from the dead pile, choose a uh, Drown God character to gain a power. I wonder if this... That's cool. I wonder if it works with uh, Spear of the Merlin King. Because Spear of the Merlin King says after a character is dead, sacrifice Spear of the Merlin King to put it back in your hand. So, like, mm -hmm. does it interrupt the killing or is the killing the trigger? Right? So, Spear of the Merlin King, does it work without Glide of the Waves? You can answer that question yeah. on, on the YouTube comments. Um, I really don't know. Neither so. do I. <laughs> the next one is Naga's Ribs. So, it's a unique uh, location. It's mm -hmm. a little loyal to Greyjoy. Um, it is a two cost and it's an iron islands location uh for each character in your dead pile naga's ribs contributes two strength to your total for dominance mm -hmm. and as a reaction after a card is placed in your discard pile move it to your dead pile so it fuels itself in a very dangerous way yes um yeah because if you're not playing if you don't have total control of the game you could like lose some really important characters but that's maybe which is why you run different plots not to be a, a, a oh downer, yeah but let's go back outlet of the waves for me is a three out of five i think Really? Three out of five? I really I want him to work. Getting uh, power... This is Rush. If getting power... In this, I want him to work, but I've tried it. If you play it in, in Lord of the Crossing and he sacrifices for military claim, you get an extra power, which is what you can sometimes need to win. So, like, when you're doing Lord... If you do Lord's, Lord's um, Great Joy, you swing all out and you go first all the time. So having this guy on the board means that their military claim is only fueling your Rush, which I really like. And he only costs two, which... May or it, which is an okay cost inside of that deck. So, three out of five because I like to run that deck, not because it's good in every great joy deck at all. I'm gonna give it uh, probably a two, just not as drastic as the one before, but still no. drastic. But I, that's just my thought. So, all right, and so let's go back to the other Naga's one. Rib. Yes. Okay, Naga's Ribs. So, uh, yeah, I like it. I'm okay on it. I, there's other better locations, I think, and. There is, but do you just once you just throw in an iron uh, an iron not thrown instead of this guy? Um, you can, however, um, the the ability of putting your car, uh, characters into the dead pile, say like you lost Asha through entry claim, mm -hmm. you're able to put her in the dead pile. If you have Damp Mirror out, you're gonna she's contributing two strengths mm -hmm. to the dominance, plus whatever characters. This is true. He then you're able to that. bounce her back in. And I had that actually happen. I had a, uh, an opponent that he discarded Victarian. He put I put him in discard pile, put him in the dead pile through Naga's ribs, and then I won dominance, of course, so I was able to put him back in. So I put yeah, a six-cost character in for free. <laughs> that's funny. So yeah, that's I, cool. I like it. I that give it a cool. four out of five. Okay. I think I'm at three, but I think I'm seeing it at more there. Like I've had where... more experience with it. So that's why. I... No, yeah, I can see that. Like, if you're running that Aeron deck, it's mm -hmm. good. But like, I think that's the only deck you play it in. Yeah. Just like the last one, I gave overscored because I like the deck it's played in. Yeah, yeah I agree. This guy, though, the first, oh. the first uh, Tar Targaryen card here, Dario Naharis, is a seven cost mm -hmm. character with a military intrigue. So intrigue, I think, is a really powerful icon in yes. most of the stuff that you're running with Targaryen. Yep. Six strength too, though, which is pretty solid. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a comp companion and he's a mercenary. He's got Renown, so that alone is a really good card. A six, seven mm -hmm. cost, military intrigue, six strength with Renown. Mm -hmm. That's pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. um, and then after you win a challenge in which he's attacking, choose another ally companion or mercenary character, stand that character, and take control of it till the end of the phase. Mm -hmm. So like we were talking about before, the Queensman is an ally, so mm -hmm. you could like pull that. Not that you would, but there's a lot of cards that you don't think are ally companions yeah. or mercenaries that you could pull with Dario. Yeah. And that's cool. I mean... You can kind of go with the Night's Watch theme instead of using like Jon Snow mm -hmm. put him in instead and you're mm -hmm. able to take maybe potentially another character from your opponent I, I don't know the numbers but I want to know how many ally companion and mercenary characters there are and how, how oh there was <laughs> yeah there was quite a few actually um, I looked it up um, I don't know the exact number but I remember the list was pretty long um, but like one of the good allies I guess you would call it is uh, Jockin okay cool He's yeah. an ally. Um, that would be scary. Yeah, take, if you pull, because <laughs> there's no limit here. It's just gotta have a keyword, and you get it, and, st and you stand it, which is one of those things. This is another magic comparison, two in a day. That's the record. Uh, but 
that ability to take someone's character or creature and then untap it and attack with it is mm-hmm. like a it's good it's it's yeah. it it's like a power swing right like a mm-hmm. if you get a really good power challenge you you take it away and gain yours mm-hmm. in this case you're taking a character away from them and gaining it and you can use it so yeah played well it can be bro- and he also has crazy. renown mm-hmm. which is always good so um yeah after he yeah he gets renown then he gets to steal a character yeah <laughs> So, so that, that could be, be fun. That'd be cool to get a renowned character with this guy if there's any, and then mm-hmm. win because of it, because mm-hmm. you get renowned twice in a turn. That would be yeah. really cool. Or if you have Drogo with him. And isn't there a Targaryen card that lets you uh, take power from killed characters? So if you were able to like sacrifice it or something for a military claim, you'd get the power from a renowned character. Yeah, and it's like it's a location, and you get two power from them if it's uh, their strength is zero. Okay. Okay. So maybe not as good as I thought, but that could be kind of interesting too mm-hmm. to try to play into, like steal your opponent's characters and steal their power. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's cool. I'm four out of five on that guy because he costs a lot, but uh, and he's he's not reducible that easily. But he, with the with cards we have now, like Grey Hall, like yeah, I give him five out of five. Ooh, yeah. So the two five out of fives are Traitor of the Crown and Darian Aharis. Yes. Uh, the next card we have is Bloody Iraq. Mm-hmm. So a one cost Dothraki only attachment. Uh, it's a reaction after you win a military challenge which in which an uh, attached character is attacking. You sacrifice it, and you can initiate another military challenge. So more fuel to the like uh, the lower crossing Targaryen decks, I think. Yeah. Um, having multiple ways to initiate a second or a third, a fourth challenge every turn is going to be good. Or if you just don't have all the icons out, like say you don't have any intrigue, but you have two you know, militaries mm-hmm. and power icons, it's able to help you get that third challenge off. Um also, I just, I don't know. I really like it. I like the whole, you know, Drogo being able to do two militaries and then potentially a third. <laughs> um, That's actually fun. And if you really want to go all out, um, having uh, that plot where it allows you to do another military, yeah, it's sheesh. probably unrealistic, but... Four military challenges in one turn could be if pretty we could, brutal. If we could dream. <laughs> we always, we only dream here. Talk about the most improbable... Utopian scenario yeah. as the game. If, if, uh, it would never I'm thinking happen. maybe two or three out of five here. Um, I would having, give it like a three. Yeah, yeah I think having road. additional military challenges is any having additional challenges is always good. Yeah, it's like when I think about it, like when you play. Have you played Munchkin before? No. So Munchkin is this game where at the very end, the person who wins is actually the second person who would win because the first person who would win, everybody throws all their stuff into to stop uh-huh. them from winning, uh-huh. and then the next person's just like, "I'm gonna just fight this guy and win," and you're like, yeah. "Crap, we didn't have anything left." So when you can initiate other challenges, yeah. um, even if your opponent knows it, they have to change how they're playing their control yeah. cards, and they can't really just go all in stopping one military challenge that they know you can initiate three. You have to be very careful. Two or three, and if you throw it in a two claim plot. I mean, you're you're wiping the board. Yeah, like what was it? The Winds of Winter or something like that. There's a, there's a few, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah, retaliation. Yeah, there you stuff go. Like that. So. All right, our first Martell card is Doria Sand, mm-hmm. uh, a bastard Sand Snake character. It's a two cost with an intrigue and one power, so pretty evenly costed. Mm-hmm. And Sand Snake keyword is actually a, one of the like really good keywords, uh, just mm-hmm. like Drown God and Ironborn, like. Mm-hmm. And seven, the sand snakes are good because sand mm-hmm. snakes care about their sand snakes. She can get extra icons from, uh, yeah, what's her name, Nymeria. Uh, Nymeria takes icons away, but doesn't she give them to other people, other sand snakes? Oh, that's right, that's right. So, like, so every you, sand snake, yeah, you're yeah. right. Sorry, so <laughs> you can you can pull the, the other icons around, and as a reaction, after she enters play, choose another character with printed cost X or lower mm-hmm. and return it to your hand, where X is the number of sand snake characters you control. So, mm-hmm. even pull it, pushing their military claim chub, chub back is good, mm-hmm. and she just does it with her own for two costs. So, yeah, two, mm-hmm. and it's not delayed like uh, the one we saw like from the last pack, which was like at the mm-hmm. beginning of the end of the phase or something, yeah, um, yeah, I like it. Um, Kind of goes with the theme of like with the princess pass and mm-hmm. um, you know it could be funny to do this mid phase with uh, Arian. Guessing Gray. Like a what was the card that you can pull it back to your hand and put a five cost or lower character out? Oh, that's Ariane Martel. Yeah, and so like you could play that with her and you're like you're like oh that's crap. You put a two character out, but then it's like pump, pump push yeah, yeah, one yeah, of your blusters back and go unopposed mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Or um, you know, then you got Gaston. You got I mean, there's different Lots ways. Of there's other ways. Oh, and then uh, I think it's Southern Messenger. I think you can um, you ambush him in, or once he enters play, you can 
put a character back in hand or something. I, mm -hmm. I forgot the actual text, but it's something with plays well with with Doria. Mm -hmm. uh, I like it. I'm thinking four, four to five for me. We yeah. are we're I like we're, I think we're like really optimistic about this, but I really <laughs> optimistic. like it. I'm gonna give it three and okay. a half, just because you, either you love or hate Martell. I I think the sand snake keyword is what pushes it to a four for me because mm -hmm. she fuels her own reaction, which is really cool. Well, another thing is you got to look at. There's that one character, Armin Oler, mm -hmm. I think it is. Um, he reduces the uh, ambush cost for each sand snake by one. She's not ambushable though, which makes oh. me sad. And I was thinking the same thing as no, I no, no. I think they all gain ambush. Oh, cool! That's so really cool. you can ambush for one. I was hoping there was a card yeah. like that. Nah, okay. So our next one is uh, Water Gardens. So one cost location. So one cost locations are usually affordable. I'm That's just gonna good. give it a five out of five. <laughs> I'm just gonna let you know. Kneel the Water Gardens to reduce the cost of the next non-character martial play or ambushes turn by X, where of course X is the number of plots in your use plot pile. So really, <laughs> I don't know. From turn one. This is it doesn't do anything turn one, but if you can set up with it, turn two. You're, I mean, you're golden. Turn two. The rest of the game, you get a dis, You just get it reduces. Like, mm -hmm. that's silly. Alongside, like, what is the the one the southern fiefdom, the one that it's like a, lets you just get two gold when you're second player. You just you have so much economy mm -hmm. for Martell. It's so weird because mm -hmm. you're just getting all this money and reduction reduction and yeah, I don't know. And, and we were talking about this earlier, but the next deluxe is going to be Martell deluxe. And so when you play that the special Martell plot, you're getting an extra plot in your discard pile. Yeah. And if you play like the 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 ten plot, um, or Reigns of Casimir, the ten plot agenda, or the Reigns of Casimir, you're getting yeah. more in your actually Reigns removes well, it from play, though. It does remove it. So from it doesn't play. count as used. But the ten the ten plot one does count as used. So think yes. about that with Martell, where you can actually have a eight nine an eight and nine turn with some of these cards. Or with Ricasso, with some of the bestow, he adds plus one of the use plot mm -hmm. card. So um, imagine playing what Dorian's game, yeah, where you get like 10 that. power in a turn because mm -hmm. you have so many plot cards used. Yeah, That would be the most annoying way to lose uh, <laughs> to, to in this game, would be someone playing one card that nets them nine power. Yeah, but that, like learning or losing in like turn four or I'm five. I'm going to build that deck. I'm going to build that deck. <laughs> that I'll sounds, play against it. That sounds so, so annoying and fun. Like, okay, I'll play against it. So I, I think uh, it, it, Water Gardens is cool. Um, I give it five out of five. It's a, such a cheap reducer that I think I. You agree. can like you. It just totally messes with your opponent's head because then you're like, well, I, they and could hits, have a vengeance. They could have. It hits you know, every single card you can play. Other it can than be characters. Oh yeah, that's characters. true. That's true. So I mean, events, locations, attachments. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just it's insane. I I I like it. Yeah, it's. I think even on turn one, though, like it reduces the cost of some cards where you can just extend further, like. In the Viper Eyes, you can hit, right? Because that's one cost. I don't think it does turn one because there's no, no use. No, uh, uh, from like the beginning of the oh. game. like uh, Not on turn one, but turn two and three. When it, yeah. when it is one or two is what I yeah. mean. Okay. Uh, you get yeah. to play Viper's Eyes for free. I think that's one cost, right? No, it's, it's zero. Two. It's zero. Well, you get to play it for free first turn. <laughs> so you so. got to be a Martell player to know this. Stuff. Yeah, and I know. <laughs> Orange is my least favorite. No. <laughs> Red is my least favorite color. In this game. <laughs> Orange is fun. So uh, we got our first neutral card next. Mag the Mighty, mm -hmm. seven cost character with a military icon with eleven strength is unique. So he's like the mountain, kind of. He's but better. But he's got renown. So hey, yeah, like, we like renown. Does the mountain have renown? Yeah, he okay. does. Uh, after um, he has no weapons except for uh, no attachments except weapons, which is really cool because uh -huh. he can't can't be milked or anything like that. Nope. Forced reactions. You have to do this. That's cool because not a lot of not a lot of characters have forced reaction abilities like that. Um, that I can think of in this pack. So I clarified. Therefore, I'm, yeah. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> after you win a challenge in which Mog the Mighty is participating, choose and kill a character you control. Then the losing opponent kills a character he or she controls. So, uh, stand them and do it three times a turn is my dream. <laughs> I think having a, a card where you can optionally kill your own characters is great. Yeah. And then what makes it even better if you had an option to potentially bring them back? Mm -hmm. So my idea when I made my Drown God deck with Greyjoy was, you know, bringing characters back into play. Mm -hmm. So if I had him out, I kill an Iborn or a Drown God character and then find a way to bring him back in. Yeah. And then you can just re-kill him. You can keep drowning your just Drown Gods. Just have to afford this guy. Yeah, which you just is the hardest part. <laughs> yeah. It hasn't fully worked yet, but... This next card will help. So yes. what's a, what's your... Do we, we rated Water Gardens 5 out of 5. What is Mag? 
Um, I haven't had a lot of chance to work with him, but just looking at the card, I give it maybe a four. You can uh, you can play that one card that puts various into play for free. Yeah, the Giants. The last yeah, of the last Giants. of the Giants. So that's I mean, you could, appropriate. You could, and then um, put him back in with Ghost of Aaron Hall. Yeah, if he's a top character that's dead, you can kill him too. So you can kill him yeah. to have them kill another character, which yeah could be pretty cool. So plus claim. So uh, let's go for the next card. Yep. So the Iron Bank. Uh, it's a Bravos card. It's a one cost location. Uh, bestow one. During the marshalling phase, you may spend gold on the Iron Bank as if it were in your gold pile. Or pool, not your gold pile. <laughs> uh, reaction after you collect income, move X gold from treasury to the Iron Bank. X is the number of gold on the Iron Bank. So mm -hmm. the nice part there is that it just sits from turn one. Mm -hmm. You need to bestow it, though, so you, can't, you cannot marshal it. Um, or you cannot set, set up. up yeah. uh, so just play a turn one for two gold. And the rest of the game, unless they remove it, you're getting... a bunch of money as long as you yeah. like kind of play it right so yeah if you spend all the gold on it you've messed up you never spend all the gold on it because then you can't get any gold yeah uh, unless you play a card that lets you put bestow stuff out uh yeah. card that bestow so but it's kind of fun um i like it i, I give it maybe a four and a half yeah just i think in four because you but you really can't it's, it's got to start it's got to like build yes up. however there's been plenty of times where i've been in games where it's like man i wish i had one more gold and i can get this character out mm -hmm. or i can play this um, this attachment or location or whatever and just by having that sit there and accumulate gold at the same time me taking like maybe one or two off the mm -hmm. location um, it's just nice knowing that you have a location working for you for economy definitely and with some of the cards that came out you could throw like uh, some of those um, one that lets you put extra cards on gold on cards from like the last pack with Marjorie on it yeah. Just bump your investment a little bit. Mm -hmm. I also really like the theme, the design theme, because it's an investment. So yeah. you put one gold on it, and if you wait long enough, you get money yeah. back. <laughs> it's like uh, a bank. Right? <laughs> so the last card we have is uh, Velo de Haras. So mm -hmm. let me, I'm going to move this because we didn't plan appropriately. Okay. Okay. Now your head is kind of blocked off. That's but, okay. Uh, it's the lives and trials and tribulations of this. They just need to see the card. Yes. So um, Velo de Harris is a four, a four gold, five initiative, one claim plot with a six reserve. It says oh, it's an omen, which is um, mm -hmm. oh, it's an omen. I don't know if that means anything. <laughs> it's building up there. Uh, when revealed, each player chooses any number of characters he or she controls with a total printed cost of ten or lower. Mm -hmm. Place each character not controlled on the bottom of the owner's deck. Cannot be saved. Plot limit. Plot deck limit one. Mm -hmm. So I think it's cool. Um, I like it. Bottom of your owner's deck is annoying this game. And that's what we're talking about drawing earlier, because mm -hmm. you probably, unless you shuffle, will never see those cards again. Yes. Unless you have the uh, character from Greyjoy that allows you to draw a card from the bottom of the deck. I knew there was deck. a card like that. I thought it was only Netrunner, but there's a card like that in this game? Yes. <laughs> and of course it's Greyjoy. It's like a fisherman <laughs> a merchant or something there's like that. A, I think Greyjoy has Greyjoy and Night's Watch have the potential to be hurt by this the most, but they mm -hmm. also have the potential to recover from this the most. Because yes. this is... I don't know if this card is really good against a weenie's deck, but it could be. So if your weenies are like two cost, yeah. you're going to lose out on... You're going to like have some trouble here because you might have more characters, but you really have to pick what you're doing. And I'm just thinking of like the turns. If I would have had this on a turn of builders versus builders, it would have done literally nothing to the game. No, <laughs> but if you're playing against an opponent that has maybe two or three average to mm -hmm. really good characters, yeah, you're gonna kind of you're gonna limit the board. And so. I think if you do like the. Um, what is the name? The Freer of Slaves or the Breaker of Chains attached? If you're playing against that theme deck, this is a really good card because they'll have to choose, like, mm -hmm. like do I want to... Like, I just lose all the people that I summon for free and keep the one character I can use to keep summoning mm -hmm. them, or do I keep my board state and sacrifice mm -hmm. uh, my big characters? So it definitely introduces... I think a lot of people were talking about this when it came out, or even when it was spoiled, mm -hmm. a lot of new decision points in the game that people yeah. weren't really ready for yet. Maybe they're ready for them now. But at the time, people were like, this is going to change how we play Game of Thrones because... Yeah. Uh, of the the nature of what it's asking you to do. Mm -hmm. It's a lot like wildfire, but it's cost, so there's just so many more ways to mess it up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's you can have... It's another reset, almost, in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, also, definitely. like, they cannot be saved, so, you know, if, if your opponent has a bunch of dupes on those higher-cost characters and they can't afford to keep them on the board, then 
they've lost everything. So yeah, that's one thing that it differs from Baylor Margolis is that yeah, you can't you save cannot them. save them, which is which is good. Very annoying, hit, but very good thing on this card because yeah. if that didn't have that, it this card wouldn't. I don't think this card. And would I also like the reserve six cards. Mm -hmm. um, and the initiative is good. Four plot, well. four gold on a on a, a board clear plot too. Yeah. If you have the right setup when you're playing this, you could yeah. get seven or eight gold depending on what you have, or yeah. seven or eight cost worth of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of cool. I like it. Um, all right, so that's the end. I think this card is probably a three or four out of five for me. Um, I'd give it probably a four. Four. Yeah. Uh, yeah I think uh, this pack was really good for us. We both mm -hmm. really liked it a lot. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if we'd expect that high of ratings from our <laughs> random ubiquitous rating system every time, but yeah. we'll see what happens. Uh, thanks for watching. It's always a pleasure to let you guys listen to us talk. Mm -hmm. So um, if you have any questions or comments or if the uh, autofocus thing really annoyed you, make sure to yell at us in the comments about how bad we are at this. Uh, and uh, um, We'll yell at our camera guy. <laughs> uh, you know, play Game of Thrones wherever you play Game of Thrones at and keep, keep yes. it up. Um, yes. We should be back with a House of Thorns review soon. It'll be longer, yes. probably two videos, one about the Tyrell yeah. stuff and one about the other stuff. Yes. Because we don't want to have you have you sit through hours and hours of stuff. <laughs> of us talking. Uh, you know, make sure to f go to your local game shop if they play there. If not, you know, play at your house, I guess. I don't want to... There's a big, like, to-do about local gaming, so I don't want to tell anybody what to do. But uh, uh, if you are in Parker or in Springs, come down to our shops, collect your mini yeah. or pictures. Yeah, um, Petries or... Um, Game of Saving? Do they play there? Or are you Yellow King? I play a Yellow King, okay. uh, Petries. I play pretty much anywhere. The Springs is like a mecca of stores, so if you go yeah. down there, you could like toss a rock and there's probably yeah. a store next to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, or my house. So. <laughs> he hosts millions of yeah. people. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and you know, have fun. We'll see you next time. See ya. See ya.